I was talking to a friend recently about how narrow-minded and judgmental the church used to be. It made me think of, back in my growing up church, my Aunt Lyde. Now, everybody at church called Aunt Lyde Aunt Lyde, but I discovered that I was actually related. To she was my great aunt. But friends, <clears throat> Aunt Lyde could run more people off from church than God could ever bring to our church. Bless her heart. Um, if a new family came to our church, Aunt Lyde would run them off. If a new teenager would come to church, Aunt Lyde would run them off. If, you know, you get the picture, <laughs> it didn't matter. If anybody came to church, Aunt Lyde, with her judgmental finger pointing, would run them off. Hey, your hair's too long. Hey, your, short, your skirt is too short. Hey, you're wearing makeup. Not too much makeup. You're wearing makeup. <laughs> uh, quit running in the church. Quit playing that awful music in the church. Quit having fun at church. So my, my Aunt Lyde told me that I was going to hell for wearing my tennis shorts, and she told my sister that she was going to hell for wearing fingernail polish, especially red. Now, I, I, I don't want to suggest that there's anything special about Aunt Lyde. I think there are Aunt Lyde kind of people in ev almost every church in America. I'm just confessing to you that I was actually related to this one, and I loved her. But friends, when, when did the church move from being a loving, life-giving outpost of heaven to being a you're going to hell because you broke one of our rules kind of an institution? Now, I'm, I'm all for healthy boundaries that help us know how to live the abundant life that Jesus gives to us. But I am not a fan. I am, I am completely against anyone who wants to station themselves by the front door of the church and checking everybody out to see if you measure up to our standards. That is... To my church friends, let me be real clear about the very first word and the last word about who we need to be as God's church. And that word is loving that we need to be loving. Any, anybody that comes to church ought to find a safe place of love and acceptance and forgiveness. And to those who have been hurt so deeply that they're not comfortable coming back to church and live outside the church, we also give to them love and acceptance and forgiveness. There would be some who would say, but Doug, the, the church isn't that bad anymore, and not that way anymore. And I want to say thank you for being part of changing the culture and the atmosphere and the image of the church. But I also will say, we cannot afford to be silent when any person chooses to demonstrate in the name of the church any attitude, any kind of action other than the love of Jesus. My friends, these days, the world is watching to see how the church responds. What a great day to love our neighbors. What a great day to love our neighbors who don't look like us. What a great day to love our neighbors who don't agree with us. What a great day to love our neighbors inside the church and our neighbors outside the church. To just love our neighbors. Finally, to my friends who may have been damaged and hurt by the judgmental actions and words of the church, I, I want to apologize on behalf of the church. That's not how it was supposed to be. I, I, let me tell you how sorry I am that you experienced that. I, I know I can't go back and undo those abusive words and actions, but I surely don't condone those abusive words and actions. Thank you so much for being with me today. 
I always cherish our time together. God bless.